for the next full hour, The Guiding Light. I thought the dinner was quite good, didn't you, Steve? Well, now, how would you know, Bert? You hardly touched anything on your plate. Well, I was too excited to eat very much, but I don't think Michael noticed, do you? Well, if he did, he didn't mention it. I wonder if uh, Ed and Michael thought we wanted to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly seemed that way, didn't it? Uh, but they have a lot of friends that they wanted to talk yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. Very good turnout, huh? <clears throat> you don't think that Michael suspects it? Oh, if he does, well, he's certainly putting on a very good act. <laughs> Speaking of putting on a very good act, you're the one that takes the prize tonight, saying that you thought Judge Willoughby was going to be nominated, named the man of the year. Well, I had to come to your rescue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you, 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 you didn't get anywhere. You know, I, I didn't know how else to get him here. <laughs> you were wonderful, because I was completely at a loss and you saved the day. But I don't even know how I got the idea. Maybe out of desperation. <laughs> you know, it just, just suddenly pops into my head. Well, I'm going to have to watch you very closely from now on, because you invented that story awfully quickly. Well, well, there you are. Now, 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 the first time in my life I think of exactly the right things to say it at exactly the right time, and already I'm in trouble. Oh, you're not in trouble with me, Steve. You never will be. <laughs> oh. Sarah and Justin are back there. Oh. Oh, oh are they? No, you can't see them. They're way in the back. You think they might like to join us, do you? No, I think they're comfortable back there. It might be a little crowded. Oh, I suppose so. I wonder what they're doing here. Well, I suppose they want to hear the uh, group from the University Glee Club. <laughs> Where's your brother? Oh, he had a... Uh, uh, had to make a telephone call. He's got a patient in intensive care. Oh, I hope he's not called back to the hospital tonight. No, oh, no, no. I'm sure that he wants to hear that uh, poop from the University Glee Club. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, there's Judge Willoughby back there. I think he'll come back oh. and say hello. Oh, honey, what, why don't you do it later? Because they're going to start the program now. No, they're just serving dessert in the back. No, Michael, Michael, please be careful. <laughs> Take it easy now with the judge. No, I'll leave, All right, I'll, I'll, I won't tip anything off. I'll just uh, ask him if he's got his acceptance speech ready. <laughs> I'll be back in bed. Oh, dear. He wasn't serious, Bert. No, 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 I wasn't thinking about that. Well, what are you worried about now? Well, maybe I should have said something to him, given him a tiny little warning. Oh. <laughs> I don't believe my ears. <laughs> After all the trouble we went to to, to keep the secret, I, I think the excitement must have gone to your end. No, no, it's just that he, he may want to uh, say a little something, and uh, this way he'll be caught off guard. Oh. You know that uh, Michael is never uh, at a loss for words. You've seen him in front of a jury. You know what an excellent speaker he is. Yes, but he's always been prepared. Believe me, Bert, that he is going to be absolutely wonderful. He's going to do you proud. I'm not thinking about me. I'm just thinking of Michael's feelings. Oh, yes, yes, I know, Bert, but there's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> You're right, of course. <laughs> Okay, that's all settled. Now let's see if I can think of something else to worry about. Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Michael seems very happy these days, doesn't he? Yes, yes, he certainly does. I just hope he won't mind that I accepted Jackie Marler's invitation to celebrate <laughs> at her house afterwards. Well, I absolutely knew that you would find something else to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I take it back, I take it back. I'm sure that he'll be delighted. Yes, and I'm sure, too. You know, Mrs. Marler's a very attractive woman, and I'm quite sure that uh, Michael has noticed that. <laughs> Evidently, you have, too. Well, a little I've, I've known her. <laughs> she certainly is very attractive. Yes, she is. <laughs> oh. There goes Sidney Daly oh, up yes, to the yes, 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 yes. There he is. I recognize him. Oh, I wonder where Michael and Ed are. Oh, now, don't worry. They'll be here any minute, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I wonder if they'll have the singing first or they'll give the award first. Well, and, and Albert, the only thing we can do is just sit here and see and wait. I feel so proud. You have every right to... And I know that Michael's father would have been very proud of him, too. I know. Oh, did you see Ed? 
No, let me go look. Oh no 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 no! Stay where you are. The program's about to start. Mm -hmm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who don't have the good fortune of knowing me, my name is Sid Daly, and I'm the chairman of the banquet this evening. <laughs> I accepted the chairmanship in order to ensure myself against having to be the master of ceremonies again this year. <laughs> but alas, as luck would have it, I could not persuade anyone else to do it, so here I am. <laughs> now, don't worry, your party's going just beautifully. <laughs> you know, with all the changes that Springfield has undergone in the last few decades, some for the good and some not so good, there's been at least one element in our community that has been a continuing source of enrichment and a vital part of the cultural life of our city. I'm referring, of course, to Springfield University. Tonight, we're honored to have with us a group from the University Glee Club. I know you'll enjoy them under the able direction of Professor Grove. Oh. There you are. suggested I get some physical therapy. Well, I have to say, I think you're a pretty lucky lady. What do you mean? Well, those stairs were hard. You could have broken something. Oh, I know. Peter, I can't thank you enough for your help. Ah, shucks, ma'am. It weren't nothing. Mm. And your moral support. Yeah. You were terrific, you know. You kept me from panicking. <laughs> How are you getting home? I'm uh, not going home right away. You're not? Well, no. Uh, well, I want to stop in and see Hillary Kincaid. She had Katie give me a get well card. Ah, that was nice. And uh, then I'm going to catch the end of the Chamber of Commerce dinner. Uh, and then you got to go dancing at the penthouse room and have drinks at the Palm Court. <laughs> no, I don't think I'm quite ready for that. What's this uh, Chamber of Commerce dinner all about? Uh, Mike Bowers being named Man of the Year. Oh, well, good for him. Mm. Talented family. Yes, they are. I have a lot of respect for Ed. Although I guess I didn't show it this afternoon. Well... Yeah, they just... It's bothered me when he wanted to call in another doctor on your case. Well, he's worked with Sarah McIntyre for years. As he said himself, it was no reflection on you. Yeah, but I had the feeling if it had been some other patient, he wouldn't have been so particular. Well, Ed and I are old friends. I see. A little more than that, wasn't it? It was, but we're, uh, we're just friends now. Anyway, I'd better go see Hillary if I want to get to the banquet in time for Mike's award. So. Ah, all right. Well, uh, okay, but don't, don't push yourself now, No, I won't, I won't. Does Sarah know about your, uh, your banquet tonight? Yes, and she said I could go if I felt up to it. Uh-huh. Well, you're lucky she's your doctor. If it had been me, I would have sent you home to bed. Yeah. I'll see you. Systolic, let's see. Normal range is 90 to 140. Diastolic. Normal range is 60 to 90. Oh, hi, Rita. Hi, Hillary. Are you okay? I'm fine. I got your note. Thanks for the good wishes. Yeah. Everyone was talking about it. And it sounded like an awful fall. Oh, I'm okay. I was hurrying and I just slipped on something. Yeah. Well, you can sure tell something happened to you. Oh, it looks much worse than it is. No great damage done. Mm. Mm. Recognize the textbook? Yeah, I bet you do. I'm trying to catch up. I uh, hope I can by the time I get out of here. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you can get some extra help if you can't. Mm -hmm. This is a great place to study. Yeah. If I have a question or anything, I just ask the next nurse that comes in, and they've all been terrific about helping me. Well, you probably learn more here than you would have in a class, or just as much anyway. Yeah, I'm sure I have. Yeah, well, so. you're looking good. Oh, yeah? Are you going to let you go home soon? Well, I think tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's great. Is your dad still here? No, he's come back to Vancouver. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I think he wanted to get things straightened out there. Well, it was nice that he could be here for a while anyway. Yeah. I think he's finally gotten used to the idea of me being here in Springfield. Oh, I think good. he was pretty impressed with the care I was getting. It's good. Yeah. I'm really glad he came, even though... Well, even though what? Well, I... I just worry about him sometimes. What, his health, you mean? No, I... 
Um, I've just had a little trouble figuring them out lately. Well, he uh, certainly seems devoted to you. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he is, and I'm crazy about him. Ever since he married my mother, he's, he's been like a real father to both me and my brother Paul. How, how long have they been married? About ten years. And, and your, your real father, is, is he in Vancouver too? Well, no, I, I haven't seen him in years. He'd, he'd always go away for about oh, weeks or months at a time, and then he'd come around and stay for a few days or so and then take off without saying goodbye or leaving a note or anything. Yeah, that must have been hard on you. Well, it was a lot harder on my mother. Yeah. Uh, my brother and I, we just as glad to see him stay away. He always made her so unhappy. Yeah. But my stepfather, now there's something else. He's, he's really incredible. He's really made a big difference in her life. And um, my brother and I were really happy to have him in the family. Yeah. Well, speaking of outstanding men, I better get going. Oh, you have a date with an outstanding man? No, nothing like that. No, I'm going to see Mike Bauer be named Man of the Year. Oh, that's right. It's tonight, isn't it? Yeah, and I want to get there at least in time to congratulate him. Oh, gosh. Well, look, I'm really sorry I kept you. I, I get carried away with talking. Oh, so. no. No, this is nice talking, and I'm glad to see you looking so well. Thank you. I'll see you later. Thanks, Rita. Hey, have a good time. Yeah. Yes. I was just calling to inquire about Miss Rita Stapleton. I understand she took a serious fall this afternoon. I wonder, can she have visitors? Can you hang on for a moment, Dan? I'll find that for you. Okay. Oh, here we are. Rita Stapleton. She was discharged by Dr. McIntyre this evening. Apparently, she didn't need hospitalization. Oh. Then she wasn't badly hurt. From what I can tell, no, she wasn't. Oh, that's good. Uh, I'm so relieved. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. in civilian clothes. I see you got new uniforms. Yes, well, hey, it's good to see you. You back for good? Oh, no. No, I'm just here for a little while for a visit. Oh, it's really been a drag around here without you. I can't believe that. It's true. You're always my favorite RN. Well, Rita Stapleton's another one, but some of them. And they don't have much sense of humor. You know what I mean? I mean, there's practically nobody around here I can relate to anymore. Can't be all that bad, Katie. Well... Hey, I didn't even ask you. How are things going with you? Fine. Really fine. Yeah? Well, what are you doing around here? Just come by to say hello? No, I came to see Adam Thorpe. Do you know if he's in? Oh, gee, I don't know if he's still here. Actually, he often stays pretty late. Um, you knew he split with his wife? Yes, I did. Oh, oh that's right. He's your father-in-law. <laughs> Good, Katie. <laughs> Is his office still in the same place, do you know? Oh, sure. Nothing ever changes around here. Except the uniforms. <laughs> yeah. Listen, stop back by if you get a chance. I'd love to talk some more. Okay, I'll try. Bye-bye. Yes, I was wondering if there was a certain passenger on one of your flights from Boise today. No, I'm sorry. I don't know which one, but his name is Roger Thorpe. This is his father calling. You can't check the manifest. Well, could I get that information from your office in Boise? I see. All right, thank you very much. Oh, uh, uh, one more thing. Could you, uh, could you possibly tell me what time the last flight from Boise gets in today? An hour ago. I see. Well, thank you very much. Come in. Adam. <laughs> What a wonderful surprise. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you again. Oh, it's good to see you, too. <sighs> well, you know, I, I, I just finished talking, checking on the flights uh, from Boise. Uh, 
Well, where's Roger? Did he come with you? No. He didn't? No, I, I don't know where he is. Oh. I came alone. Adam, Roger told me about you and Barbara, and I'm very sorry. Thank you, Peggy. Um, I'm sorry, too, but uh, don't worry about that. Hmm? How is she? I really don't know. I hardly ever see her. Oh, Holly tells me from time to time how she's doing. She's been busy with a column, helping with Christina. And how are you? I'm uh, busy. <laughs> As you can see, working late. Well, listen, did you come right here from the airport? Or have you had dinner? Yes, I, I did. I ate on the plane, and then I, I rented a car. I wanted to come directly to the hospital and talk to you before I went to the apartment. Oh, Peggy, your friends have missed you. I, they're going to be very happy to see you. Listen, sit down, please. I tried to call Bert from the airport, but there was no answer. Well, there's no wonder. She's at the Chamber of Commerce dinner tonight. Oh? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be there myself in a little while. Oh, are you? Big surprise for you. Mike Bauer's been elected Man of the Year. Oh, how terrific. <laughs> Bert must be so thrilled, and Mike, too. Oh, yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, Mike doesn't know about it yet. This is a, sort of a little state secret we're keeping. Oh, I see. Well, Adam, don't let me keep you. You go on along, and we'll talk tomorrow, no, okay? No, Peggy, no, no, absolutely not. I want to find out everything that's been going on with you and Billy and... And Roger. Well, Billy and I are doing just fine. Oh. We're making the adjustment. Well, we were doing fine before Roger came to Boise. Well, what happened? We talked a great deal, but it just didn't work out, Adam. No chance? No, I don't think so. Adam, I, I have a lot of different feelings about Roger. And I know that there's a lot of good in him. I also know that he cares a great deal about Billy and me. But there's just no way that I can erase what happened. I could have once. I did once. But he was never honest with me. Peggy, only, only because he was afraid of what it would do to your relationship. He, he was terrified of losing you. Well, he wouldn't have lost me if he'd been honest with me. Anyway, I... I came to talk to you about Christina, Adam. Roger told me that he... wants to become a big part of her life. Peggy... You no, know, Roger hasn't been the same since your marriage broke up. He's felt that he's had no one left in the world except for Christina. So it became kind of an obsession with him. I, I've talked to him. So has Holly, Ed. I tried to talk to him, too. but He was so determined. It was frightening. Yes. And then I began to think that maybe I've been totally selfish no. because no Peggy it all makes me very sad did he uh, did he say what his plans were he's coming back to Springfield and where is he Club? Yes, darling, I'm very happy. 
Your applause speaks more eloquently than anything I could say, except thank you to Professor Grove and the University Glee Club. Frankly, I think it was better when I was in school. And now we come to that part of the program where we congratulate one member of the Chamber of Commerce and disappoint all the others. <laughs> Except those of us on the selection committee who can rest assured that we weren't named Man of the Year only because we were serving on the committee. <laughs> Seriously though, the honor that we bestow on one of our members each year is a coveted one. Okay, and it should be. Because it represents the recognition of an individual's contribution of long hours and dedicated service to the community as a whole. This year's Man of the Year has distinguished himself time and again in his profession. He's won the respect and admiration of his clients and colleagues alike, even those members of his profession who uh, are forced reluctantly to be his adversaries on occasion. <laughs> this man, every year, has been a leader on our United Fund Drive and with our Boy Scout movement and he's been one of the guiding geniuses behind the downtown redevelopment plans which are going to turn Springfield into the most beautiful town in America. Oh, wow. <laughs> this year's Man of the Year is a man of unquestionable character, the highest ideals, the strongest moral fiber. And as I'm listing all his fine qualities here, I'm beginning to wonder why he hasn't been called to Washington. <laughs> 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 well, maybe our man of the year will wind up in Washington one of these days, but we hope not, at least not right away, because we need him in Springfield. <laughs> we need his integrity and his leadership and the inspiration he provides to those who have the good fortune to work with him and learn from him. We need his devotion to the projects he's launched and sustained, and we need the good humor with which he carries out his responsibilities and interests. Well, this has been fun, but I've kept you in suspense long enough. The man I'm talking about, Springfield's 1977 Man of the Year, is Michael Bauer. That's you, kid. You better get up there. You knew all along. Didn't you? Yes, we did. We did. Congratulations, Michael. I should have known something was wrong when he wanted me to come here at Greek. <laughs> well, what can I say? I'm stunned. For the first time in my life, I'm totally speechless. <laughs> Are you sure you were talking about me, Sid? <laughs> I can think of dozens of other people in the Chamber of Commerce that fit that description. My brother's probably back there uh, saying I fooled you all again. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I haven't been doing anything except what comes naturally. Uh, I grew up in a family that believes in community service as a way of life. My father, uh, William Bauer, who some of you I'm sure will remember, gave a great deal of his time to civic activities. And he's the one that started me in scouting, as a matter of fact, and I saw the great deal of satisfaction that he derived from that. So all I've been doing is following in his footsteps. And of course, there's my mom, who I guess I've always taken completely for granted, too much, I'm sure, who has contributed wherever and whenever she could, and she's been of undying support and an unending encouragement to me always. My whole family has, even Ed. <laughs> <laughs> so I really have to accept this uh, honor in the name of my entire family. I guess the only other thing I can think of to say is thank you. Thank you all very much.
Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for coming, and good night. Congratulations, my friend. <laughs>
I'm sitting here wondering if there's any more, Roger. I'm wondering if I've heard it all. You see, I'm beginning to feel incredibly foolish about things. No. No, you should not feel foolish. I know I shouldn't, but I do. Because I keep thinking of all those times the three of us were together and you two knew something that I didn't know. And now suddenly I feel as if I don't know you at all. I just feel stupid about everything. Hey. All this happened so long ago. You must have been more than friends. If you didn't want me to know about it, Roger. It wasn't anything serious. The same way that it wasn't serious with Holly? We were friends, Rita and I. We were all alone in Abilene. We, I guess we were lonely. We didn't know anybody else, so we spent some of our time off together. And that was it. I mean, when she left town, it was over. Is that the way she felt, too, or just you? No, it's the way we both felt. It's funny because I, I've really identified with Rita a lot these past few weeks about the trial. I've, I've understood her, her fears and, and, and feeling of isolation. I felt really close to her. I know you have. And now I feel even closer still. Because I'm wondering how it was for her to say goodbye to you. I'm wondering if it would be that easy for me. Peg. I'm feeling really sorry for her. No, that's not true either. I'm really feeling sorry for myself. Peg. I was a different man then. I have one question for you, Roger. Why are you telling me all this now? Why didn't you tell me when the trial began? Why didn't you tell me when I asked you all those questions about the Grangers? Because it just didn't seem like it was needed. Why now? Because, because this is the last day of Rita's trial and it's going very badly for her. What has that got to do with it? There's a way that I can help her. Congratulations. I'm glad you got the professorship. It's Professor California. It's my mother. Oh, it's nice to meet you. And this is a new the psychology position. department has done well. I'm so glad you came. I nice see. Well, where's the man of the year? Why, Adam! Steve just took him off to meet some friend of the... Did you just get here? Oh, I wish I could have been here. How'd it go? Oh, it was wonderful. Just wonderful. Michael was completely surprised. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. I really don't understand it, though. Somehow. Mike managed to convince them that he deserved it. Oh, Ed. <laughs> I'm just behaving the way Mike expects me to. He was the proudest person in the room. Oh, I believe that. Mm. Uh, listen, he did accept the award, didn't he? I mean, he didn't refuse it or anything dramatic <laughs> no, like that. No, As a matter of fact, he accepted it, I think, with a very good grace. <laughs> His speech was all right. Uh, needed a little polish here and there, but off, for an off-the-cuff speech, it was oh, okay. Oh, just listen to him. <laughs> It was so nice of you to come, Adam. Well, actually, I would have been here earlier, Bert, except uh, I had quite a surprise. Oh, what, what was that? Peggy's back in town. Peggy? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. 
goodness, I can't wait to see her. Is she back for good? Did Roger come back with her? Bert, Dr. Oh. Jackson's looking for you. Oh, yes, thank, thank you. We, I want to hear all about it, but will you excuse me for a minute? I'll, I'll be right there. Don't worry, Bert, I'll be right here. Did Roger come back with her? No, he didn't. I, uh, I don't know where he is. He said he would contact me, but I haven't heard any. Holly was expecting him, too. That's the reason she stayed at home. She was afraid that he might want to see Christina. Well, apparently she won't have to worry about that, Ed. At least not tonight. Sure, I did. Or didn't I? Where did I put it? Uh, no, I put it in my pocket. I remember. It was there when I left. What happened to it? Oh, my, what an evening this has been. <laughs> well, you certainly had me buffaloed, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, Mike, I must say, for such a hotshot lawyer, you sure were easy to fool. <laughs> well, that's because of my basic, modest, unassuming, guileless nature. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Now, tell me the truth. Didn't you have any idea? Are you kidding? No, not at oh. all. I swear to God. I mean, I should have guessed something was up when I had all this pressure about <laughs> attending this dinner. Well, believe me, it was a lot of work to get you here. <laughs> well, yeah, what would have happened if uh, my meeting with Channing had been canceled? But it was canceled, wasn't it? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. You mean to tell me you were responsible for that, too? <laughs> well, and Anne actually did it. She called Mr. Channing and explained the situation to her. Oh, Anne, yeah, I should have known. Oh, she was just wonderful, darling. It was her idea to call the client. Uh -huh. Yeah, but what does it profit a man if he wins an award and loses a client? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to lose a client. As a matter of fact, Mr. Channing was very impressed and more than pleased to call and cancel the meeting. He was a bit worried that you might start raising your legal fees, though. Mm -hmm. It's a thought. It's a thought. <laughs> Listen, why don't we go to my house and I'll get some cheesecake or something like that and have a little coffee? Uh, well, Michael, I have another surprise for you. Well, I don't know if I could take two in one day. What is it? We're all going over to Jackie Marler's because she's having a champagne celebration in your honor. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that's nice. Oh, Dad, you get the first picture taken with my new camera. 
love, and Merry Christmas. Ed. This has been The Guiding Light. Fashions provided by Subret and Barneys. Be sure to be with us tomorrow for another hour of The Guiding Light. This program was recorded.